Let's review the functionality provided by Docker. First, let's execute Docker PS command. As you may recall, Docker PS command only shows the running containers by default, which is why right now we can see no container is running on our system. When you want to run a container, you will need to have some container images beforehand. Let's inspect what images are available to us on our system. To do this, we will execute docker images command to display all the existing images. And here it lists out the images we have downloaded already. Apart from the images already available, you can also pull more images from the internet. Let us show you how to do this. We are going to try and download something lightweight. There is a lightweight operating system called BusyBox. BusyBox combines tiny versions of many common Unix utilities into a small executable. It provides replacements for most of the utilities you usually find in GNU file utils, shell utils, etc. The utilities in BusyBox generally have fewer options than their full-featured GNU cousins. However, the options that are included provide the expected functionality and behave very much like their GNU counterparts. BusyBox provides a fairly complete environment for any small or embedded system. It is a quite a popular image to test out Docker functionality. What we are going to do is that we will execute docker search busybox command. What this command does is it goes out to the internet and searches for all the container images which match the name busybox. Here is the search result for the images available freely and publicly. We will discuss more about the actual source of these search results later. Okay, so now we have got the busy box container image we are looking for. This is the base image released by Docker. There are other images that are customized versions of busy box images modified by other developers according to their needs and shared back to the community. So now that we have found the image we are looking for, the next step is to download it on our system. For that, we will use command called docker pull. Let's execute docker pull busy box to download it. So as you can see, it has to download this image from the internet. But since container images are so compact, the process took only a few seconds. Now let's execute docker images command to verify that the new image has been downloaded and it is ready for us. And voila, we can see the basic box image is in the list. Let's execute another search. And this time let's search for CentOS. Here you can see the official CentOS image. Since Docker is so popular and people across the world are customizing and sharing images on public repositories, you can simply search the Docker repositories for any particular operating system or package there is every possibility that you will find something relevant. And if it doesn't exist or doesn't match your exact requirements, you can download the closest match, customize it and share it back with the community. You can easily look for images for popular packages like Apache, MySQL, Packstack, OpenStack, Tomcat, etc. All these popular packages are readily available in the public Docker repository. Next functionality that we should discuss is the Docker Hub. Docker Hub is a cloud-based registry service. It provides a centralized resource for container image discovery, distribution and change management, user and team collaboration, and workflow automation throughout the development pipeline. All the publicly shared Docker images are actually stored in this public repository. Even the docker search command we used earlier basically searches docker hub repository for available images. The URL for docker hub is hub.docker.com. Let's visit docker hub and explore it. All right, so here is docker hub. This is the web based interface to the public repository. Here also you can perform a search for a docker image. For instance, let's search for busy box. You can see it returns familiar search results which were found in the terminal window as well, which proves that the shell docker command 
perform the search against the same Docker Hub registry. The concept of Docker image repository is not limited to Docker Hub or public repositories only. You are free to set up private repositories or corporate repositories where you can store your private Docker images or share these images only within your own team or department. Not only that, you can configure your Docker search commands to search across your private repositories. Now, let's discuss the docker run command before we move on to other components. Let's execute docker images and grep busybox command. We have already verified that busybox is downloaded and available to us. Next, let's try to run this image by using the docker run command. Docker run can start the process in the container and attach to the console for the processes standard input output and standard error. It can even pretend to be a TTY. This is what most command line executables expect and pass along signals. We will also pass in a few extra parameters to our command. Hyphen I for interactive mode and T for enabling terminal session. And finally, we will pass in the image name busybox. And just like that, the image is up and running. Now we are inside the busybox image container. If you want to exit the container console, you need to press Ctrl P plus Q and you will be back on the main terminal session. Let's now again execute docker ps command. We can see that the container is still running. This is the container ID launched using busybox image and an automated name will also be generated by docker. You can change this name via docker run command. You can attach to container terminal once again by executing docker attach d39 command. Whenever you perform operations on the container, remember that it is more than enough to use the first three characters of the container ID in our command. Busybox is a very tiny image, but it is almost a full featured Linux distribution. So we can execute any of the Linux based commands in our container. First, Let's check the container version by executing uname command and you can see the version is 3.13.0-71. Now we are going to jump out of the container image and back on our host terminal. If we execute the same uname command again, you will either see that the host machine is using the same kernel version or the container is using the same kernel as the host machine. So basically, the container has all the capabilities to perform the operations that are performed in a full-fledged Linux distribution. You can see the file system inside our container right here. Whatever changes are made inside the container will be limited to the container itself. These will not affect the host machine at all. You will need to execute the docker run help to get complete documentation about docker run command. As you can see, here are the options which we can use with the run command to run our container. Some of these options are controlled on C group level. For instance, the BLKIO weight controls block IO relative weight between 10 and 1000. The C group parent controls the optional parent C group for the container. CPU period limits the CPU scheduler period, etc. Basically, when a virtual machine is launched inside a KVM, you have to specify the computing capacity like number of virtual CPUs, memory, etc. you want to allocate to the virtual machine. Say we allocate two virtual CPUs and two gigabytes of RAM. That means our virtual machine cannot consume more resources than what are allotted to it. Moreover, as the cumulative compute capacity on the host machine runs out after launching number of virtual machines, no more VMs could be launched on that host. In effect, the resource allocation of the host machine gets controlled manually. But how do you allocate or control the resource allocation to the containers? You will notice that when we launched containers earlier, we did not specify any CPU or memory limit. This is because Docker automatically manages all that internally. Suppose if there is a high priority container image, you would want to run and allocate extra resources to that container. 
To do this, you can tweak the exact resource allocation to your containers. Another option is hyphen P for publishing a container's port to the host. Using this option, you just need to mention which port to publish or you can also provide a host mapping. Say, if you are going to run Apache web server inside a container, you can run it on default port 80, but map it to another port on the host. The mapped host port could be any available free port. For instance, we can map our port 80 from the container to port 1234 on the host. Now, let's try to remove the container. First, you will need to stop your running container using the docker stop command. But in order to do that, we need to get the container ID. So let's execute docker ps once again. And then execute docker stop d39 command which will stop our running container. If you will execute docker ps command again, it won't display the container in the list, which means the docker container has actually stopped running and docker ps displays only the running containers. And with the option hyphen a, docker ps lists all the containers, not just the running ones. If you want to get rid of a container, you will need to use the rm command. Let's execute docker rmd39 command. See how it has removed the container. Furthermore, if you want to remove the container image as well, then you need to execute docker rmi busybox command and you will see that the image has also been removed. 